Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. Today is Memorial Day. And there are 624 acres in Arlington Cemetery that we should memorize why we uh, are celebrating today. Now, I'm recording this the day before. I've had a good weekend uh, an extra long weekend, my brother's come up, and I got to do some fishing with him. I got to catch up on some stuff for my business. And I caught up on some stuff with FPC and all that other stuff, and I'll drop that later this week. But I wanted to drop a short podcast or a short thing, a reminder of why we're off on Monday. Um, you know, after the war on terror, um, we have... Lots to be thankful for that at least that war has not brought um, death and suffering on our on American soil, at least not on the scale that we we know of that happened in Afghanistan, Iraq, um, any of the places we've sent our soldiers. Um, there's a viral video going around right now of one of our veterans who's having to fight to get help with the VA. Now, I'm of the volition that we have been sending our soldiers to fight for no reason anymore. And as we're gearing up, or as the military-industrial complex and the American government is gearing up to possibly start World War III um, with uh, Lindsey Graham's speech about how it's good to kill Russians, uh, that was viral and went everywhere. And the stuff that's getting hot in Ukraine, and we keep sending more things to escalate the war. You know, I'm I'm re- reminded of my history lessons about how Vietnam started. Vietnam started very much the same way. We had advisors on the ground. We kept putting arms in the hands of the NBA, uh, not the NBA, but the South Vietnamese, until it got hot, and then we started sending more of our soldiers there. And right now, the same thing's ringing true in Ukraine. They have millions of dollars worth of American armor, um, armaments, uh, NATO armaments. We It's been confirmed by leaks that have come out in the last month or so that we have actual boots on the ground. They're special operators. Um, again, this is what happened during Vietnam. And I have to look at this and go... Why haven't we learned our lesson? You know, how many Americans, how many men, women, and children have to die in senseless wars to feed the military-industrial complex? You know, it, it's it's glaring to see a rural town like mine have a, a memor- memorial flag field and to see so many flags on it from soldiers and Marines and airmen and National Guardsmen from our local area that have uh, passed. And it makes me think about that divide in the United States right now between rural country, uh, cities and or rural parts of the country, I should say it that way, and really dense uh, cities with lots of people. You know, I don't understand why leftist policies that seem to be pointed towards getting us into another fight when it's usually the rural people that actually pay that debt in blood. You know, it's because of that patriotism that we still feel in rural America. And patriotism, love of your country, is one thing. But we're borderlining on insanity and thinking that our government is flawless. Some of us still believe that. And you can't look at what's happened in the last, you know, three or four years and see that there's definitely a reason that we shouldn't uh, be involved in other people's conflicts. You know, I'm tired of seeing our soldiers, our Marines, our airmen coming back in body bags or in coffins, metal coffins with flags draped over them for little to no benefit to the American people. You know, the country's free because of these men, women, and you know, that have done this 
ultimate sacrifice for us. But was the sacrifice really necessary? And how much better off would our country be if these people were still walking around? You know, how much mental capital did we lose on stupid wars? You know, George Carlin said it, fighting for peace is like um, fucking for virginity. And, you know, my friend in Canada, Chris, told me very early on that in my life I didn't know about George Car- George Carlin was the actual one that said that. But it rings true. And while I will honor all those that gave the ultimate sacrifice because they believe in the American that I the America that I still believe in is there. It makes me very cautious in the future of the United States and and saying that we don't need to do this. You know, I I remember being a war hawk after 9/11 and wanting the, that vengeance that we all did for being struck on American soil. And that we we as a people, myself included, got swept up in that mania and we wanted our ounce of flesh, our pound of flesh, I should say, for them striking us on American soil. And looking back now, I wonder how many millions of people or how many hundreds of thousands of people died for us to uh, get that vengeance as the American people. And then to hear stories about, you know, our soldiers and Marines guarding poppy fields and oil fields in uh, those theaters of operation and wondering, was that trip really necessary? You know, I understand protecting someone's way of life and that's how they fund some of their things, but that's not what we originally, um, American citizens, were thinking our our, uh, military fighting force was used for. And now as you see um, the culture war heating up, and you're seeing our uh, military fighting force facing this uber-woke agenda, and they're seeing a recruitment down curve, you have to wonder why. And I think it has to do with military command more so than anything else. You can't go leave translators and leave people we promised as America, uh, we promised something to in Afghanistan leave them behind without Americans feeling a debt of guilt and gratitude towards their people and wanting them back here. You know, we left American citizens in Afghanistan, and we left 16,000 more in Sudan this last month. So as I memorialize all those that gave the ultimate sacrifice, the lesson has finally been won by me. Let's not sacrifice our very own people, the best of the best, for senseless wars that don't need to be fought. Unless the American homeland is under direct threat, I don't see a point in us going to war anymore. You know, these proxy wars tend to eat up a lot of American capital, and I mean that in every way possible, with little to no benefit at the end of it, except for to make the rich richer and to highlight how good we are at making the weapons we do. So I ask you to remember those that gave that ultimate sacrifice so you can have that burger or hot dog and realize for once that that trip isn't necessary. And that these people would still be here if we all just stopped and held people to the held people's feet to the fire and said enough's enough. And that's what I think we're starting to see now. You'll never see a Ukrainian flag fly on anything I have. Because while I do not agree with the Russians rolling into Ukraine, they broke into a sovereign country. I don't agree with escalating that war. So much so that our people, the American people, end up having to fight that battle for them. You know, LBJ said that was a battle for Vietnamese men and women. 
well, this is a battle for Ukrainian men and women. And while we're seeing videos from Ukraine and, you know, they're going to fast food restaurants and they're going to uh, clubs to party it up while there's fighting all the way around them, that tells me there are people that aren't really serious about fighting like we would have to be. You know, if you look at what happened to the United States during World War II, how many institutions, how many uh, industries geared us up towards fighting the Nazis wholeheartedly. That same thing should be happening in Ukraine, and it's not. Why? Because we keep arming them with our stuff. They have yet to feel the sting of the war in their capital city as much as we would have or what we were afraid of during World War II. And that tells me that these people aren't as dedicated to the fight as we would have been. So why should we back them? And while I understand that life goes on, and that these are rare glimpses into behind the, the curtain that is in Ukraine, it still tells me that these people aren't serious, otherwise they would have mobilized everyone and moved every resource towards kicking out their invader. And until they're willing to do that, I'm not willing to send another damn dime, another damn arm, and damn sure not an American soul, period, to fight in Ukraine. So I ask you for a prayer for those that have fallen and to reconsider ever sending our soldiers into harm's way again without a valid reason that doesn't affect the homeland. Like, share, subscribe, be great. In the top, I can't let it slide. My politics are rather controversial. Who would have thought that I ain't catching all slack and I have enemies on my ball sack. I'm thinking insanity is what you call it and I just get a...